the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello and welcome to the final episode of the Dim Din Podcast, your very safe space to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions and frustrations um, amongst Africans in the diaspora and our relatives and friends back home. Wow, I am so emotional. I cannot believe that we've made it to the seventh episode of the Dim Din Podcast. We promised you seven episodes and we delivered each and every single one with laughter and content and knowledge to everybody that has been around with us from the very start of this to where we're at today. We appreciate you. We cannot thank you enough. God bless you all. And of course, we cannot go ahead without thanking God for keeping us through all of this. Okay, there's so many people that I want to appreciate one after the other, but if I decide to do that, this episode will be too long. So we're going to keep it short, and I'm just going to send a general gratitude out there to everybody in Sierra Leone, Canada, in England, in China, in the Gambia. You know yourselves. Okay, our topic today is relationship. You hear... You heard me right, relationship. And we're narrowing it down to the theme of, most of us that were raised in the different parts of Africa were told the longevity of a partner relationship, of a marriage, highly depends on the woman's ability to be patient all through that marriage. Now, whether this is a misconception or reality, we will find out soon. To have this conversation with me today, I have two amazing guests. We're going to Jamaica today, and then we'll travel back to Sierra Leone. On my near right, I have um, Zetilda, and on my far right, I have Prince. I'll pass it over to them to introduce themselves a little bit more. Over to you, Zetilda. Thanks, Becca. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure, and I look forward to this conversation. (coughs) As you mentioned, I am from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I came to Canada just over 10 years ago. I'm a citizen now. Congratulations. um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. So in terms of me, who am I? Well, first of all, I want to say I am a mom. Mm -hmm. And that is one of my my greatest role, my greatest Mm achievement. So I try to put that out there. (laughs) (laughs) Academically, I am a clinical social worker. I work in mental health. Also have a background in teaching. Mm-hmm. I used to, in my country of origin, Jamaica, mm-hmm. I used to be a guidance counselor. Mm-hmm. And here I work with children and youth, and I also work with adults. Um, my passion is to see people thrive and succeed in their everyday life. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, us in the diaspora, sometimes we meet upon a lot of challenges. I being one of those persons, mm-hmm. and I've overcome a lot, and so that's also makes me and so I'm happy to have that, this conversation with you today, especially about relationships. Mm-hmm. And so I look forward to Beautiful, beautiful. Questions. Wonderful. Over to you, sir. Um, I'm Prince mm-hmm. um, from Sierra Leone, like you said, and I'm happily married for nine years plus now. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you want to tell us anything else about yourself or we're keeping it just at that? He's oh. happily married, period. <laughs> 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 Why well, go more into myself? <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. I'm a politician mm-hmm. and I'm a community person. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you all so much. You have a treat coming your way today. So let's get right down to it. Okay, so like you um, heard me say earlier, growing up, the messaging that I heard as a woman or as a young girl growing into, into a woman was that the longevity of any relationship, specifically a marriage, highly depends on the woman's ability to be patient. They go out to an extent to call us to say, once you get married as a woman, your name changes to Patience and Beatrice, because you have to be patient through it all. Now, is that a misconception or reality? Ladies first. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's a really powerful question. You know, mm-hmm. off the top, it sounds as if we 
carry a lot of the burden with the relationship mm -hmm. and um, being in a supportive role and being able to hold things together. In my culture, they didn't tell us about patience and Beatrice. Mm. What I notice is that the ride or die chick, mm. that is the term. I mean, that would be something that would be similar to patience and Beatrice. So. Mm -hmm. But consist consistently, mm -hmm. is that the word? Mm -hmm. Well, no, not necessarily. But there's an expectation that as a woman, you hold things together. Mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you wait until the men are able to get themselves together, especially because we have children in the relationship. For those who are married or those who are in common law mm -hmm. and they live together, mm -hmm. sometimes you have the children. And usually, culturally, the children, caring for the children usually rest mostly with us. And so we want to give our children sometimes the best chance of seeing two parents together mm -hmm. in, within that context, because there are different contexts, right? It could be just boyfriend and girlfriend, or it could be some other arrangement. Mm -hmm. But certainly from my perspective, unfortunately or fortunately, mm -hmm. women are the ones who hold things together. And um, is it a misconception? The way you put it, probably. Mm -hmm. But based on my experience, it is not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a reality for many of us. Not for everybody, but for maybe. many of us. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not me. My marriage did not succeed, right? Mm -hmm. I, but certainly, I was married for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then things happened. But based on what I've seen around me, yes. Wow. You're really getting off started in like a get ready for this. It's going to be an intense conversation. <laughs> Thank you for such a beautiful response to that. Because what I hear you say then is that it is a reality for some of the women, especially in this time and day. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you put in a, in a bit of sort of like a where it has a bit of that consistently or consistency to it, then it can be a misconception. It can be, yes. Thank you, yes. thank you. Yes. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are longing to hear your perspective on this. Misconception or reality? Definitely, I would say it's a misconception for one reason and one reason only. Mm -hmm. If you look at today's society, mm -hmm. the population of women outweigh the population of men. And if you do a quick Google search, you can see that one woman, sorry, one man is equal to five women. So if you are saying uh, it's, uh, the women have to be patient consistently, I will have to disagree with that because mm -hmm. I see, again, there are more women than men. The misconception here, it's not just the woman that has to be patient enough. The man has to be patient enough too. The man goes through things too. So that's why I say it's a misconception. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so you are taking sides right off the bat. It is a misconception, period. It is not up to just the woman uh, to be consistent in patience and like being like holding the relationship together. The man has well, a role too. If I can add to that as well, right? Okay. It's not just the uh, um, saying I'm taking side. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a based on the data. Like I said, if you do a Google search, you mm -hmm. can find out that there are more. We the population of the world is one man is to equal to five women, and as well. <clears throat> Men have to be patient with the women. Mm -hmm. Because the women know there are more women, mm -hmm. they may be apt, they may have different way of acting. Mm -hmm. They may be stubborn, they may be naggy, they may be this and that. Mm -hmm. No offense to our beautiful women out there, <laughs> but men have to be patient too. So the misconception is not just women. Mm -hmm. It takes two to be in a relationship. There's always two. You can't just say it's the woman and mm -hmm. then, no. It's both of them are in a relationship. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So what I hear you say then is that both individuals in the marriage or in the relationship have a responsibility and have a duty to be patient and to work with each other for that relationship to work. Absolutely. Wonderful. Before I come to you and to the next question, just want to let viewers know that although this is the last episode, we're not leaving you hanging. We have a special episode coming your way on Father's Day. Hang tight. You'll be able to learn a little bit more about it. Okay. 
Before our next question, you were going to say something. Yes, I just want to add, and thanks for that, um, that reminder that um, <laughs> we are many and you are few. Absolutely. It sounds like some competition there, right? <laughs> but anyways, um, when we talk about being patient consistently, mm -hmm. if you are being patient, you have a result, an end in mind. What are you being patient for? What are you waiting for? Where are we hoping to get to or where are we hoping to go? What is the understanding that I, as the woman, in a supportive role, will be patient? What's the outcome we are moving towards? Mm -hmm. right? Because just being patient. There has to be a goal that we're to working goal towards. That we are working towards. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. And Beautiful. as I mentioned before, because sometimes we are the carer, and I'm talking culturally now. Mm -hmm. There's a little different in the diaspora. So mm -hmm. I, I set my response within the backdrop of mm -hmm. my culture and what I've observed. You mm -hmm. know, and I mentioned the ride or die chick. Right. Right. So the man is out there, maybe struggling, maybe maybe he's gone abroad, maybe he's away from home working, and the woman is home holding down that fort. Mm -hmm. And it's going through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. So she's being patient with the hope that he will come back with the goodies mm -hmm. and things will get better. So within that context, unfortunately or fortunately, it's a reality. Okay. But okay. if I could okay. butt into that before you come in, mm -hmm. the same can be said, it can be twisted as well with a the, with the guy. Mm -hmm. The guy can have to be patient as well because he's waiting for an end result. What's that end result? Mm -hmm. Is the woman going to work with the man? Mm -hmm. the, there can be that again, the woman is outside finding more money or green pasture, like you said, or working. The man is home taking care of the kids and keeping the house. So again, it could be... The world can be switched. That's why I say it takes two to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. One person cannot be in a relationship by themselves. That's why I say it's a misconception. Hey, are you ready for this? Because me, I am enjoying this already. We're bringing those pointers out. And before I go to my next question, I think I had a conversation with somebody about the population of men and women. Mm -hmm. And at the time when I looked it up, there was actually more men than women. But maybe that's just the website that I looked it up at, because I have this whole thing. When this, these are my conversations. Like, you want to get Patricia talking? Talk about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But I'm not taking sides today. I'm not the guest. I'm going to stay neutral. <laughs> 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 to our next question. So, now, there are certain, I think in this part of the world, we call them red flags, green flags, yellow flags. Certain things that we look for in a relationship to determine whether this relationship is a relationship I should be in or is it in my best interest to not be in that relationship. What are some of those red flags that people should look out for? <sighs> yes, when we think about red flags, mm -hmm. right? things that are staring you in the face but probably you cannot see. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and I think um, one of the big ones is uh, not being able to be yourself. Mm. You know, not being able to be yourself, so having like you always have to, be to put else. on a show, right? Walking on eggshell, mm -hmm. right? You know, sometimes a person who does not provide that safe space for you to express your feelings, mm. and we're not talking now about getting angry and tossing things, etc. But, you know, um, one who does not p p probably um, validate you when you have a concern, you know, maybe that person might not be open to listening to you, they belittle you, put mm -hmm. you down, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I think those are some of the big ones. And, of course, you know, I'm sure you will jump in. Mm -hmm. But some people have some deal breakers. So yeah. if you tell them where your boundaries are, and sometimes they keep pushing that, mm -hmm you know, and not respecting that, then I think some of these are some of the things that we should be mindful of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think those are some red flags. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I would can see you waiting just, to I would just that. I just have to agree <laughs> with everything that she said there, like, you know, and um, no uh, maintaining or no value or respecting your partner or your significant other's uh, space it's a very big red flag. For me, what, what the only thing I can add to that, uh, I think that's missing from what you said, is the communication aspect. One of the biggest red flag in a relationship, if you don't have that, that mutual conversation that just flows, that mm. says a lot, you know, like you were saying, you have to be or acting to be somebody else. You should be 
conversation. It should be open. It should be free flowing conversation. You know, you can just have natural conversation. That laughter, that joy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That companionship. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the things you should be looking for. I, I, in my perspective, those are the, some of the red flags I look for. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's going right into our next question here. But I really love how you both have beautifully um, highlighted some of the red flags that people can look for. Because I think especially when you talk about um, women of color, being in a relationship and not feeling like you can be yourself, not feeling like you can have your natural hair out once because that man is looking for a show girl mm -hmm. and that man wants you to be like a girl that he can take out anywhere and like wants you to like have all of that glory all the time if you feel you have to have makeup on all the time with the man that you call your man that you are home with i think that is a huge problem in itself because like you said you should be able to be yourself and Absolutely. feel comfortable being yourself in that home now, we cannot talk about red flags without talking about green flags. So when we talk of healthy relationships, healthy relationships, yeah. what is a healthy relationship? Mm -hmm. Healthy relationship, um, one that works for both of you. Okay. You know, and you have some mutual agreement on some of the expectations mm -hmm. and some of your roles. Yeah, that is important. Also, um, the opposite of what we just spoke about, mm -hmm. you know, um, are you able to get your point across without thinking that you're offending mm. the person, right? That's huge. When you can feel validated, it feels that home or wherever it is, is a safe, safe place, a mm -hmm. safe space you have there. Someone who is proud of you. Mm -hmm. That's big. Yeah. A healthy relationship also, I believe, and based on my experience that one that sometimes, and this might be a little bit different here in, in the West, mm -hmm. but where your extended family is a part of your community, mm. right? Because for a relationship to thrive and to be healthy, sometimes in my culture where I'm from Jamaica, it's important to have the involvement of your, some of your extended family, yeah. because sometimes those are the people we go to first for some advice. Oh. Those are the people who can give some wisdom to us. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And they can say, come on, get it together. Mm. What you're doing is not right. Right? Mm. So we want health relationship where you're not, you know, you're not belittled, you're not put down. Right? So just being, feeling validated mm -hmm. and be free to be who you are. Have some individuality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can have your own friends, you know, you're not attached at the hip. Mm -hmm. A person who support your dreams, your goal and desires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the um, healthy some of relationships. The health, yes. I really love everything that you've highlighted. I think earlier in my social work education, around my diploma level, I saw this demonstration of what a healthy relationship should look like. That's very similar to what you've said. There was circles drawn, one circle, and the other circle came in a little bit into that circle. So there's this part that's you both coming together and Connect. trying to find a collective identity. But then again, there is the you that you came in with and the you that you came in mm -hmm. with, and you're not losing yourself mm -hmm. to like completely like dissolve into this relationship because then that sense of self get lost completely and that's when people want to do everything together when your partner gets up you want to get up and I think if it's one thing that I've learned about men is that although they want you around they don't really want you around <laughs> not all the time that, that's, that's another misconception right there hey. that's not a misconception but okay. just to add yes. to what you were saying I'm going to respond first to what she said mm -hmm. A healthy relationship is one where you can be yourself, like you're saying, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. When you come into the relationship, you come, like you were saying with the circle thing you were talking about, you come as an individual. Now, in a relationship, it says it takes, um, two, to tango. It takes two to tangle mm -hmm. or the opposite attract. So I'm not expecting you to be me and I don't want you to be me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, in the circle, you made that, um, an, uh, an analogy that a little bit of yourself has to go with this. So we might have some something in common. So in a healthy relationship, there is someone who's going to validate you, like you said, someone who you can feel comfortable to be vulnerable with, mm -hmm. who's going to listen to you and give you an honest 
advice on opinion mm -hmm. who's not going to judge you for who you are someone who's going to accept your good your bad and the, the other parts of us you know what i mean another great sign of a healthy relationship that i can emphasize is enough is communication mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. if you can communicate with the person you call your partner that's not a healthy relationship but if you can communicate easily someone you know you're going to tell like the awful thing about you who's going to protect you in a deep secret that's a healthy sign of a relationship. And the misconception I was saying again to you, uh, uh, Ostia, you're saying mm -hmm. guys don't want uh, don't want you guys to run. I think it's a big... Not all the time. Not all the time. I think it's a big misconception. Again, here it is. Mm -hmm. Because as guys, we want our women around us or our companion to be around us. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. My wife is a very, very laid back, quiet, conservative. I'm a very hey. outgoing person. So, you know, there are times... I want to go do my do, and then she doesn't want to go. Mm -hmm. I respect that about her. Mm -hmm. But there are times I will get her to come with me to show her new things, or so we can experience new things together. That helps build the bond and everything. Like, mm -hmm. you know, again, that's another great sign of a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. So, what you're saying then is that having, like, being able to do things with your partner as often as possible is also another sign of a healthy relationship. Absolutely. It, because it allows you that time to bond and grow together as a couple. I do appreciate that. Um, I think one thing that I was going to add with regards to that communication piece, I remember this time my dad, there was, because I, because some of us feel more comfortable going to my dad for mm -hmm. things. So sometimes when we go to mom and ask for something and mom says, mm-mm, we like sneakingly go to dad and say, hey, <laughs> dad, I want this. <laughs> yes. Can I please have it? I learned very quickly because dad would always say, have you asked your mom? mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What did mom mm -hmm. say? Mm -hmm. At that point, you know, there is the no go zone here because yes. he was very particular about splitting. He says, you do not split between your mom and dad, right? Like you, mm -hmm. like we are a team it's and a we're sticking work. together, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So that goes to speak to that communication aspect of things too. Coming into now that we've touched on the red flags, we've touched on the green flags. You mentioned that sometimes because of the children, people tend to want to stay in that relationship and be that ride or die. Because you're thinking if I leave, what, the, like, what would this mean for my child? And I think sometimes just that, that societal judgment that comes with living a marriage, because people are pointing fingers, mm, I don't think you tried enough. And that, that identity goes with you for a while, right? You're divorced. That's an extra label on you. At what point should one leave a relationship? You want me to go first on this? You can go ahead. When it comes to relationship, mm -hmm. it's you and the other person, your partner. Mm -hmm. So the voices of outside shouldn't influence your decision. So nobody knows what you are going through in a relationship. Mm -hmm. the, I'm talking about the good and the bad and the ugly. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're talking about divorce and you, know, uh, you want to stay. It's up to you. What can you handle? At the same time, you got to see what kind of... Uh, example you set in for your offspring, in this case, your children. Mm. Uh, you want your children to, uh, you want to teach your children that staying in an abusive relationship is okay. Mm. So what can you, uh, you have to think about your mental health as well. Sometimes you can also, it doesn't mean necessarily you have to be married. You and your partner can divorce, but still maintain a very good relationship for your kids. So I don't think, uh, when it comes to relationship, you, you have to forego the voices of outside. And I think uh, earlier on you were saying you believe in relationship, you have to include the, your extended family. In my opinion, that's a recipe for disaster. Because hey. you're going out and saying, oh, mm -hmm. my wife did this to me. And you go and complaining things. And now everybody's going to judge you, the wife or the husband. In my opinion, I would suggest, as a re what works for me and my wife is, we discuss ourselves. We solve our issue ourselves. Because if you go tell A, B, C, they're going to add their own perspective to it. And now it's going to be so, oh, okay, I have to do what my mom say. Or I got to do what this person say or else I'm going to be bad. You know what I mean? So when again, when it comes to relationship, it lies between you and your partner. You guys work it together. You listen to others. You make, not, not others, so you listen to each other's mm -hmm. and make the best out of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Beautiful point. And I love that we have different perspectives as well. 
because I hear you say it is best to leave everybody else out of the relationship and mm -hmm. the two of you focus on your marriage, which is very much a diaspora and sort of like perspective as well to an extent. And I also hear you say it is beautiful to involve people that care about you that 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 have that have some level of experience so that you can pull into their knowledge to sort of like help guide that relationship. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and if I could just add, mm -hmm. and I love what you said, mm -hmm. and I totally agree, but we are assuming that the couple or the two people, that they have the skills to work through their issues. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes when relationships come up on a roadblock, people start drifting apart. They don't have the skill. They start mm -hmm. avoiding. Mm -hmm. So sometimes within your trusted circle, which could be the family or maybe somebody in the community mm -hmm. who is known to be respected and trustworthy. Sometimes they can bring wisdom, mm -hmm. some good advice, mm -hmm. right? Especially in our culture, our well, culture, yeah. you know, not a lot of people go seek family, family yes. counseling or, or couples therapist. counseling. Yeah. So yes, it is, I agree with you. If you can work it out, mm -hmm. which a lot of times we can't, but if you can work it out, keep it there. But those people who, who were at your mar wedding or those people who support you, if there's one or, there are one or two people who can, you know, just a third person who can give, maybe not necessarily tell you what to do, yeah. but can bring a, another perspective. I think if, that, if you have that resource available, certainly within my context, it worked for me to a point mm -hmm. until I got here, yeah. <laughs> but I've seen it work wonderfully, beautifully True. in my culture. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you with that. Again, I love what you say. I understand the points you're making, but let's switch it again. So don't you think if uh, a couple or the, 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 the couple are going through an issue, if both of them sit down and talk to each other, you know, and communicate, understand, instead of playing the blame game, it's your fault, it's my fault, but you communicate honestly and deep down, don't you think that's going to even increase their bond? It's going to help them become a problem solver. Mm -hmm. Now you don't go depend on others to solve your problem now you know because again marriage is a lifetime commitment there's always going to be obstacles you know what i mean so now you know okay if me and you are going or if we're going through something instead of avoiding you i'm going to come and say hey this is what's going on so again i'll give you an example with what my wife and i do that works for us we, we say, okay, every few weeks or every whenever we can, but we take to do it like bi-weekly. We check in on each other. Oh, what's going on with you? How are you doing? What can I do to improve? What did I do? You know, those little things. So it makes you become a problem solver instead of you depending on outside people. Because again, there's nothing wrong with the outside help. But again, the outside help can be influenced by other people around or by situation which can affect your, uh, your marriage. Totally, wow. ag totally agree. Again, <laughs> if you have the skill set, you don't need any external interference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it seems as if we don't have it. How many couples find themselves in couples therapy? Yeah. And even when they go to couples therapy, sometimes they don't stay together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you don't, if you have the skill set, mm -hmm. and if it's an agreement, baby, you know what? <laughs> if we, in this relationship, mm -hmm. we're going to come up on obstacles. Mm -hmm. If you see me pulling away, shutting down, blaming, Point it out to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We want to give ourselves that space to calm down, whatever it is, and then we'll discuss it. Mm -hmm. If we have the tools, fine. But if you don't have the tools, a lot of relationships, they fall apart because things keep adding up. It keeps stocking up and nobody's addressing it. It kept pushed under the carpet, carpet. Mm -hmm. and then it reached a point of no return. So I agree with you totally. Mm -hmm. If you have that skill, to mm -hmm. have that conversation one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. without a third person. Have it by all means. But if you don't, please use the resources that are available, that to, are you. available to you. Okay. I love that. I love where both of you are coming. And I think that's where Dim Dean has done a really good job at like finding a balance between the two perspectives, right? Because, of course, you're both speaking from experiences too, right? From your personal experiences. And maybe that external involvement has not been beneficial for you, whereas mm -hmm. that external involvement has been beneficial for you. So it goes to show that one it's not a one-size-fits-all nope. um, when it comes to relationships, right? And, of course, 
there could be some value in involving people that are healthy themselves, right? And have the best interest of the relationship mm -hmm. at heart. Because mm -hmm. if my own person comes in and they're just looking out for my best interest, then the relationship might struggle because mm -hmm. they, they're not looking out for the relationship's best interest, mm -hmm. right? And my own people are probably more protective of me than they would be of the, of the spouse. Of the spouse. But at the same time, if they come in with like that healthy sort of like, let's work on the relationship, then it could go a long way. Okay. Wow. Lots to digest here. If you're just joining us, this is the Dim Dim Podcast. And today we are breaking down the beauties of a relationship. Um, we chose to end on this topic because every other topic we've talked about, all six um, episodes, really do have a connection to relationship. Having a healthy partner would really help you to improve on your mental health, on your health, on your parenting skills, on your leadership skills, and on that gender diversity piece that we've talked about. So here we are today talking about this whole beautiful um, topic. Now, we see a lot of partners, especially coming from different countries to here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes one partner has to travel ahead while the other person waits because they only got an opportunity for one person <laughs> to travel. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes it's like you come here and you see how things are here and that relationship then that you've had becomes a long distance relationship and you are into a whole different chapter of your life that you're probably going into for the first time. What can we say are some of the challenges of a long distance relationship? Mm. Well, the main challenge of a long-distance relationship is there is no physical connection. Oof. And that's a, a, a deal-breaker for majority. I'll say it's a deal-breaker for 99.9% .9 of the men. Because we understand, um, for example, you leave and travel to, let's say, the States or Canada for a greener pasture, and you leave your significant other behind. Now you... We are, everybody have feeling. Your woman is going to miss you. The husband is going to miss the, the, the wife. And then now you're going to say, okay, oh, she's there or he's there. Let me do this. So I think one of the... One of the, the uh, man or the woman? Both. both. It can be both. So okay. one, of the, <laughs> one of the main challenges I see in long-distance relationship is the, the physical attraction. Okay, so just that intimacy gets cut down a lot and that could affect the, the, the survival of the ab relationship absolutely. in general. Wonderful. Thank you. That's a really, really good point. Over to you. Yeah, the challenges mm -hmm. of a long distance relationship, and I agree with you. The intimacy. It seems as if women can hold it together a little, much longer. Hey. But, but again, <laughs> there is a statistics. You may say there is a statistics that women can't hold it that long than men. <gasps> you know, Who and if you, if you the look stats? at the stats these days, more women cheat than men. Yes. Yeah. Well, I am not. <laughs> I am, <coughs> well, oh, cheating is relative, but but mm -hmm. but but in terms of um, the challenges of a long distance relationship, and usually when I speak, I speak within context, right? Sure. Let's think about um, maybe, and you mentioned the man and woman. So, say if the woman is left back home, she might have kids there to take care of. She might not. Mm -hmm. And she's hoping to come and join our partner, as was in my case, right? And many others I know. But the lack of physical connection or physical intimacy, mm -hmm. which is a main part of the relationship, that is a challenge. Um, also, when you get here, especially if you come to Alberta, this weather. place has about eight months of cold weather, right? A lot of our men, if I can say so, they don't want to be alone. Right? Mm -hmm. And we back home, we, we believe in community. So we are always finding community, finding a friend down the road, finding Miss Lou up the road. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to, um, you know, to develop another relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think the intimacy is the biggest Piece obstacle. Yeah, and sometimes people grow apart during that sure. time. Mm -hmm. Because now you're exposed to a different culture, a different way of doing things. Um, know that you have um, you have access to more pe people from different backgrounds and races. Sometimes the curiosity is there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so, um, and sometimes I find too that maybe the man is not succeeding 
as, as much as he thought he would. Mm -hmm. And so um, in my culture, most men are admired, you know, being in the protector and the provider, not mm -hmm. that women mm -hmm. don't work don't and, do and, and have their own money. Mm -hmm. But a part of that is to present this front that you have it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they come here and they meet on hard times, they don't want to be honest to their partner. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to feel as if they're letting them down, down yeah. or feel diminished. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that could cause some withdrawal, right? And sometimes they could find solace elsewhere. True. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just um, maybe meeting, up, you know, falling on hard times, mm -hmm. you know, and um, not being able to finance their family back home as was expected. Mm -hmm. And sometimes maybe finding a new relationship. Yeah. Just to add to what you were saying, another thing that affects long distance relationship is the burden now relies on the one person like you were saying. So now the man is gone and now it's the life of the woman to take care of the kids and everything. Now they used to be a team mm. and now it's only one person. So it becomes too overwhelming for that person being, like I said, in this case, the woman. So now the person, the woman need a man to be in the life of the kid. Let's say the kid is acting up, they're teenagers. So you know what I mean? So maybe once the woman will find somebody to come talk to the kid or to come help with the kids, and then the woman is going to say, oh, they're going to start leaning towards the man too. Mm -hmm. So that's another, so the burden, right? So when one person is gone, it breaks the team. And once the team is broken, it leaves room for anything to happen. Mm. Yes. You yeah. guys have pulled in a lot of things, and I think they are all very valuable and up for further discussion because they could all be individual topics on their own. They're like cheating aspect, they're like going into a new culture and like the challenges that you experienced there. I think personally one thing that I experienced in that uh, regard was that when you separate, you have a memory of each other of who you were as an individual and as a collective. And I think most people get stuck with that identity of who that person was, mm -hmm. of, of who their partner was. So when you go apart for two, three, four, five years and you reunite, you don't know who this person is that mm -hmm. you've reconnected with because it's not the partner that left you. They've grown in different ways, like you said, mm -hmm. right? And even like that mental mindset has shifted in some ways that is different from what you know. Mm -hmm. So trying to learn who this new person is that could be a gap where people get lost, lost as well. Yes. In Absolutely. That process. Yes. Um, last question to sum this all up. Do we feel like the upbringing we got in our countries of birth prepared us for relationships or marriages in the diaspora? That's a loaded Good question. question. <laughs> Very loaded Very question. Very loaded. <laughs> but I can tell you back home, um, my relationship was patterned mostly on what I observe, mm. right? You know, to be a trustworthy wife, you know, to take care of the kids, make sure you have a wonderful home. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm an academic, so, uh, you know, I still go to university mm -hmm. and I have my career, but I am still domesticated and I love doing that. Mm -hmm. And so when coming here, it's sort of different because now, um, you know, things like gender roles, they're no longer gender roles. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that that's the biggest issue here, mm -hmm. where the sexes are fighting each other. Men and women are fighting each other. Who cook in the kitchen, who, who, who take care of the kid, who is working more money, who is it? So it creates this big problem between us, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, the way I was raised back home, it prepares me to have a relationship here. It gives me an advantage too. Mm. Right, because now I can see things from both ways. Mm. I can see what it means for both man and woman to be working in the office. So you're spending equal amount of time away from home. Mm -hmm. And then when you come home now, mm -hmm. this is where the problem is. Because who is going in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. And who is going to clean the yard? Mm -hmm. And people start measuring who is doing more than who. Mm -hmm. And so um, with me, having those both lens, mm -hmm. I still choose to be a homemaker. Mm -hmm. And I happily do it. Mm -hmm. But of course, I want my partner to help. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But I mean, who po I'm not going off too much on a tangent, mm -hmm. but I enjoy to do doing domestic work. Mm -hmm. I like when my home looks beautiful. I like to cook meal with love mm -hmm. and share it to my kid or my family. Mm -hmm. And so if my partner is not doing that type of job, I expect mm -hmm. him to probably rake the yard, do other things, mm -hmm. right? So I like that. But for people who come, especially younger people, maybe like yourself, mm -hmm. where there's a strong emphasis on sharing the responsibility and the blurring of lines with gender role. I understand it, mm -hmm. and there's a space for it as long as a person is not being controlled or oppressed, mm. or their ability or desire to be in the workplace is not being oppressed, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that my upbringing back home has given me an advantage because now I have two perspectives, and Beautiful. I can choose what works for me and my partner. Beautiful. Beautiful. Over to you. I would say I'll have to agree with her 100% in this one mm -hmm. because in Africa, we've, uh, it tends to be the women are more submissive. The women are homemakers. The men go fend and come. Whilst in here, it's, it's better when it's, when it's two income than one income. So the woman go to work, the man goes to work. And when you come home, you both have to share the, 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 the chores and taking care of the kids, the cleaning the house and that kind of thing. I would definitely think in this context, Africa did prefer, uh, prepared me for marriage and relationship. But coming to Canada, it also expands my, my understanding or my thoughts on this. It gives me the opportunity to, to value your partners more, which in other words makes you guys bond together and grow as well as a couple. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Yes. You have had this beautiful <laughs> conversation. I would tell us Very all, good. relationships can be difficult. Of course, we long for them, we want them. We are humans who want to connect with each other. But when two people meet, they were raised by two different people. And honestly, like I said, I grew up with that whole aspect of, as a woman, I have to learn how to take care of my man by cooking, cleaning, and making sure he's well taken care of. Being in the diaspora, I'm learning that it's not just that. And in fact, if you do too much of that, they call you somewhat different because the men, some of them, actually want to cook and clean for themselves. So how do we learn the transition and work together and be patient with each other to make things work? Be patient with yourself. Be patient with each other because at the end of the day, we need each other. And sabe, sad Thank you. Thank you. The Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world.